Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2,423. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah! Today I'm in Arlington, Virginia, which this time of year is quite spectacular with the leaves, the autumn leaves, all ablaze with a very special guest by the name of Clemens Schoenberger. Clemens, welcome to Cars Yeah! Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Absolutely. Thanks, Mark, for having me today. Absolutely. We're going to have some fun. Now, before we get started, I always ask my guests this question to kind of be a little bit of an icebreaker and... and Maybe show another side of you. What's one little thing that maybe people don't know about you, Clemens? Oh, there's probably quite a few things people <laughs> don't know about me, but um, I would say a lot of people don't know that I used to swim for the Costa Rican national team. No kidding. Oh, very cool. Was this uh, high school, college, or after college? Yeah, that was like uh, during high school and the first year of uh, college. Um, so yeah, I used to live there and uh, finished my high school degree and then did my first year of college in Costa Rica. And I was into competitive swimming and um, was able to join the national team and participate in in several competitions on an uh, international scale. And um, I think I still might hold like one or two records for uh, breaststroke. There. Wow. But, yeah. Very That's cool. Fun so you're you're a water man. I used to be. Yeah. Like uh, I, I, I don't swim that much anymore. I go every now and then, but um, I enjoy the water and I, I used to swim quite a bit. Yes, absolutely. I spent so much of my youth in the ocean surfing as a kid in Southern California. And I've always wished I had a pool or one of those resistant pools where you swim in one location, you know, or the the water comes out and kind of holds you in place because I've always thought swimming is one of the best exercises, especially as you get older. It just is spectacular. Yeah, and I've, I've recently been trying to get a little bit more into it. Um, it definitely helps to balance out the work and, um, you know, the fast-paced environment that we live in. And so I've recently tried and pick it up and go at least like once or twice, but for sure not on the level that it, it used to be um, back in the days. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Spectacular. Well, let me introduce you here, and we're going to dive into a pretty cool deal uh, that you guys are doing. Clemens Schoenberger is the Director of Operations at Free to Move. That's Free, the number two, Move in North America. Free to Move is a global mobility hub and part of the Stellantis Group. They are revolutionizing the way people access vehicles with their ingenious tailor-made solutions. Clemens is an award-winning vice president in the mobility industry with experience in organizations ranging from startups to $3.2 billion global businesses. His career path has included roles ranging from regional VP of operations, area and senior branch managers, and more. Freedom Move was named the Frost and Sullivan Mobility Service Company of the Year. Congratulations. Stellantis is a constellation of 14 iconic automotive brands, including Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, Maserati, Fiat, and many others. We'll be back in just a moment, but first a word from our sponsors. So Clemens and I are going to take a couple laps in the pool, and we'll be right back. Be prepared to be inspired. Years ago, when it was time to renew my collector car insurance policy, my carrier's rates went up, way up, but my usage was the same, and I never made a claim. I didn't even have a ticket. So what's with that? So I turned to American Collector's Insurance. Has your collector car insurance recently raised your rates for no good reason? Tired of paying an annual membership fee? Then it's time to look around and call American Collector's Insurance. I shopped around, I asked friends for recommendations, and found a winner that I can trust. And boy, I'm glad I did. I saved hundreds of dollars every year and slept better at night knowing my baby was properly insured. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting vehicles since 1976. They provided me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by their history of taking great care of their clients. What could be better than that? So give them a call and ask for a quote today. 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 224 9324 and protect the ones you love like I did with American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. For several years now, you've heard me talk about Linkage Magazine. I've been a subscriber since the start. They're talented and creative team brings you a spectacular publication and website 
that shares the automotive passion from a worldwide perspective. Linkage is about driving, restoring, collecting, and firsthand experience at collector car auctions and more. They bring you real-world values plus rational, experienced opinions on the current markets. They cover the automotive world and the people who share our passions. And Linkage Magazine has grown, mailing you six issues annually. Join me on this journey with Linkage. They're geared for the automotive life. You can subscribe at LinkageMag.com. So, Clemens, we are back. So I would love for you to first talk about the parent company a little bit, because when I spoke with your colleague, Dallas, who put us together, and thank you, Dallas, she's an awesome part of the team there, um, she mentioned as free to move as part of the Stellantis group, and I did a little research, this is a massive, massive company, and I didn't even realize, which I thought, I call myself a car guy, uh, Stellantis owns a whole bunch of automotive brands overseas that, in addition to a lot of other things, can can you talk about them a little bit first? And then let's get into what Freedom Move is, because what you're doing is kind of revolutionizing and twisting up the idea of renting or borrowing cars. So let's start with Stellantis. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Mark. So we are part of the Stellantis group as uh, Free to Move, and Stellantis searched out of a merger between uh, F- FCA and, and PSA in uh, Europe. And uh, they kind of joined uh, forces a couple of years ago and, and, and represent some of the biggest uh, brands worldwide, which allows us really to extend those brands into the free-to-move uh, world and um, have a great offering for the products to our customers and use the different brands for the different mobility solutions that we're offering, whether that's like car sharing or subscription models or or rent. So being part of the Stellantis group really allows us to dive into um, the various business partnerships that we have, whether it's like with dealerships, and it also allows us access to technology for innovative solutions that we might bring to the market in the future. That could be right now EVs, for example, which is uh, something that we want to roll out or that we already have been rolling out um, for some of our business segments. But that could also be future products that that are not even yet available to the public. So very, very exciting to be part of the Stellantis Group and have such a strong parent company as a backup. No kidding. Well, free to move. You guys have just celebrated. Am I right on this? Your five year anniversary? Yeah, that's correct. Like um, beginning of October uh, marks the five year anniversary for our operations in DC, um, in particular for uh, car sharing. And um, we are very proud of that. We've achieved to reduce the CO2 emissions um, in the city and at the same time allow for people that might not be able to purchase a car to still have a very flexible means of transportation to do their commute or to get a car for the weekend for a very attractive price and and again under very flexible conditions. So let's get a little deeper into what Free to Move is because you guys offer a kind of a unique approach to this whole thing. And I know that when I spoke with Dallas, your colleague there, I said, well, because I wasn't aware of what you guys do. And I said, well, Free to Move, what, what does that mean? And she explained it really nicely to me. I'm going to let you take a stab at it because you, I'm sure you can do a great job here. But what you do is you create solutions for people that are in different situations that might need a car for either a short term or a longer term versus their traditional go out and buy or lease a car. Correct. I mean, um, in a nutshell, uh, free to move is empowering people um, with the new ways to access vehicles. And that's primarily done through the app. And people have really like a one-stop shop solution for a seamless vehicle usage by the by the minute, by the day, or by the month. And so we cover everything. We feel that we're also helping the world to meet the transition to EV targets and to further reduce CO2 emissions within the automobile industry. What do I mean by that? Maybe not everyone is able to quickly and easily purchase electric vehicles. So by us making EVs accessible, customers are able to make the choice to participate in this transition, either by testing these vehicles prior to making a long-term purchase or by integrating these vehicles into their transportation portfolio when it comes to B2B, or simply by using it through our car sharing service where they do not want to commit, but they still need uh, transportation and mobility, and they can use that without having to 
purchase the vehicles. And maybe last but not least, I mean, we're definitely like a tech company driven to uncover the, and integrate the latest technology into the free-to-move service platform. And I mean, this, this can be through the use of AI. For example, we partnered up with another company called Carvalu, who does like an AI-based damage detection. And this technology allows, you know, for any kind of accident or damage that happens to the vehicles to determine what exactly happened. And it allows for a more transparent process. But that's just one of the technologies that uh, we're implementing in our cars to, you know, make use of AI and any other advantages that, that exist today. Well, very cool because I think about, okay, if I need a car short term or longer term, typically other than purchasing the vehicle, you know, I go to a rental car company. And one of the things that when I spoke with Dallas, I said, well, how are you guys different than a rental car company? And you just explained some of it. And I'll let you go a little further. But the idea is what if I just need a car in the afternoon or if I might need it for a month because I'm, you know, so many people working remote now might go stay in a city for a while and need a car while they're there. But right. maybe renting a car doesn't make sense from a traditional traditional sense, it seems like you just offer a lot of different, as you say, mobility solutions for people. Maybe you can walk through how each of those works for us. Absolutely. And again, like my background is in car rental. So previous to joining, I, I spent about 16 years in car rental. And to me, it was always, you know, what is next or how can a company come up with a solution that's a lot more flexible, that's, that's also from a, from a user experience like easier to navigate maybe, right. and at the same time, you know, have a positive impact on, on the urban environment and make use of new technologies. I think with free-to-move, we, we do exactly that. So specifically, if we take, for example, uh, car sharing, the way it works is it's a free-floating model. So there's vehicles around D.C. and also Portland um, today that you can access through your phone, through our app, and you can reserve that car. You'll see a map where the vehicle is located. It's usually within like a five minute walk. And you select that car on the app, you reserve it. And then when you get to the car, you just click on unlock, you click on start the trip, press the start button of the vehicle and you drive off. And when you're done, you end the trip. Cool. So, and you can park the car literally anywhere you want. So it's not like you need to return it to a specific location. There's no agents. Um, there's no infrastructure in the classical sense, like with the car rental company where you need to pick it up and you need to drop it off at a certain location. Um, the cars are spread all over the city and you can park them wherever you want as long as it's legal to park the car there. Interesting. Well, and you guys, are you, for, for right now, are you just in those two cities or are you in other cities, not only in the U.S., but throughout the world? Yeah, correct. We, we are um, pretty much in all major cities in uh, Europe, whether that's like Berlin, Paris, um, Madrid. Um, so we are one of the biggest car sharing companies on a global scale. And here in the U.S., as of today, we are in D.C. and in Portland. We do have plans of expanding. That's one of the main reasons I joined the company. I'm excited to explore the market in North America, and we have plans to be in major cities across the United States and also Canada. Well, this is really cool, and especially in, in more co congested urban settings where I'm just imagining, okay, I go to Europe. Typically, now, I was probably unique. Every time I went to Europe, I rented a car and drove everywhere. I don't think I don't think most people do that because you don't really need to do it, but I like to drive. But if, say I'm in a, a city, and then all of a sudden I go, oh, you know, we're in Paris, but we should go out and see the Palace of Versailles. Well, that's a bit of a a distance. We're not going to walk there. Maybe there's no train. So we can just uh, go on our app and, oh, there's a car right over there. We'll jump in it, drive out there, bring it back and walk away. Is that how I envision how easy this is? Exactly. And that's that's the idea. I mean, that's exactly the way that I couldn't have described it better. That's what we, that's what we want to offer in the urban environments, make it really easy to get from A to B. And I mean, of course, there's uh, ride companies as well um, available. But if, if you feel like you want to drive yourself, then we certainly offer the most flexible and most convenient solution. Well, that's very cool. Now, is there any integration? You mentioned something other in, uh, as well interesting. The EV push that's happening right now. Uh, I've had many talks in fact, I, in fact, I had a show two weeks ago about uh, EVs. And one of the things that a lot of people that I'm talking to now, they're, they're interested, but they're not so sure. 
And the idea that we could rent a car or borrow a car, I guess is a better way to say it, from uh, Free to Move and spend a little time with that EV and go, is, is this really what I want? Is, you know, the things that I'm afraid of, the tethering concept or, you know, the, uh, the distance the car can actually go. And then after that, you can say, okay, I'm ready for this or no, nah, it's not right for me quite yet. I'll maybe do this in the future. So you have uh, a bunch of EVs that people can pick from as well, or can they also pick Let's say I'm interested in, in a Maserati. I'd like to drive it for a month and see if I really love the car. Are there those kinds of options available? Yeah, there's both options available. I mean, in fact, um, we offer a wide range of EV vehicles today for our subscription program, not only from the Stellantis group, but a much wider portfolio of vehicles. So, for example, in uh, LA, um, you can subscribe to a Tesla vehicle that's available. Um, we do have the new Kia EV6 available as well in Miami, for example. And we're very excited to get like the uh, Fiat E500 into our fleet, um, with, which is going to launch uh, early next year. Um, of course, the Maserati, who doesn't want to, uh, to test drive a Maserati for a couple of months? <laughs> Why not? And yes, that's, a, that's an option as well. If people want to drive it, uh, we'll make it happen. Uh, without like a long-term commitment. So if anybody's out there and wants to drive a Maserati for a few months, feel free to reach out to me. So the other part of this is, of course, customer service, because sometimes when you borrow, rent a car, you have a problem. And so through the app, is that how the user connects back if, let's say, the car isn't working for some reason, they have, you know, they have an accident or something like that? Is everything right there on the app so they can just reach out and say, hey, I need some help? Yes, correct. So um, most of our customer support happens through the app. Um, for the car sharing in particular, it's it's really a shared economy. So we depend a lot on the users to communicate with us to report certain things. Let's say there's any issue with the car, um, it all goes through the app. But at the same time, we do have a 24-7 um, in-house call center that also provides service over the phone. Again, you will not find like the, the the classic, let's call it rental location or branch where you have people physically present. But in the digital digital domain and also through the call center, we offer 24-7 um, assistance and also, of course, roadside should the car break down. Very cool. And the app is easy to find, correct? It's just free, the number two move? Correct. You just uh, It's available on the Apple Store and on the uh, Google Play Store and you just uh, look up free to move. And you should find it right away. Very cool. So I like to ask people about what I call our driving inspirations, people that are very influential or have been very helpful in your lives. Uh, I assume with a career like yours and you've, gosh, you've lived and been all over the world, there's probably a lot of folks, but is there maybe one looking back that really has stood out for you? Oh, Mark, yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, I've, I've been lucky and I've, I've I was able to live in various countries uh, throughout my life. And of course, there's a lot of influential people. But if I had to pick one or two, I mean, probably one of my swimming coaches was very influential, I would say. And then um, business oriented, one of my uh, early managers I was lucky to work for. And uh, back at the time, he was the managing director for uh, Spain um, for my previous company. And then also opened the U.S. And I think that person has been uh, very influential. I learned a lot. And uh, some of what I learned, um, I would say, still defines what my core values are today when it comes to leadership. And I mean, in particular, you know, number one would be that the customer is always king. Right. So without happy customers, the business will not succeed. Um, taking care of them is crucial. And that also means reacting to trends, taking feedback really seriously, and then committing to fixing the issues and follow through on, on that feedback. Whether that's applied to a product or a service, it doesn't matter. Without a customer, like none of the businesses would be successful, right? So I, so I think that's something that I learned through, through that mentor. Number two is that I feel that employees are equally important and without happy employees, you also won't be able to succeed. No kidding, um, yeah. And a lot of managers, I mean, it seems simple, but I think a lot of managers, and I've seen that throughout my career, underestimate the importance of taking that seriously and adapt their management style to the individual, right? Um, so people have different motivations. Some 
employees might be more money driven. Um, others simply look for recognition, and um, you know others might not enjoy being in the spotlight. You know, so they prefer to be in an environment that allows them to focus on analytics or numbers, whatever that may be, and not be pushed too much. Or while others enjoy being competitive and and always wanting to be that number one, right? I mean, ultimately, I think it's fundamental that we recognize and adapt to each individual and their needs. And last but not least, I think, and this is something I learned from both from my swimming coach and and, and also from my mentor at, uh, throughout my, my earlier career, is that it's important to generally care about the individual and invest time in getting to know them, not only on the business level, but on the personal level, right? I mean, we spend like uh, anywhere between like eight and sometimes 12, 13 hours uh, in the office or whether it's, that's the home office or it's a classical office environment, it doesn't matter, but we spend a lot of our lives like working. And so it's, it's, I think it's important to see the business as an extension of the family and really transmit that to the team and to the people that are work there. Because if it becomes family or an extension of your family, which in my opinion, that's really what companies are, then you're also willing to give more and um, to go the extra mile. And especially like in an environment that we are in today, which is a very dynamic and competitive environment, like you need the team to be motivated to succeed and, and you need to care about people that, that work in your team, right? So I think that's that's the second aspect that uh, I learned through, through my mentorship. It, business needs to be profitable. So if we don't make money or, you know, even if it's a nonprofit, even a nonprofit should 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 be uh, successful in a way that they can sustain over a, a long period of time. And um, I mean, the same applies to the private sector and to the automotive industry. Uh, we need to be able to make money so that in the long run, we can uh, come up with great products and great cars and great services. Can I just put you in charge of everything, Clemens? <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you have it figured out to me. Yeah, I mean, honestly, and I think number three, if it's if it comes to profitability and being successful as a business, if you take care of the first two aspects, in my opinion, the, the success will come automatically and the profit will come automatically. Because, you know, if people care, if they feel responsible, if they feel taken care of, they're going to make the best they can and they're going to take the right decisions. And at the same time, if the customer is happy, you know, they, they're not going to go somewhere else, right? They Why is it that... Um, you know, like businesses are successful. Why is it that uh, Stellantis as a company is one of the most profitable businesses? Because they're offering a wide range of products that customers love, right? And they, they come with new products and people expect it and get excited about it. People get excited about the new EVs that are coming to the market. And that's the result of listening to the trends and what the customer wants. And I think if you can deliver on the customer being happy and the employee being happy, then as a result, you will um, have success in, and reach profitability as well. Yeah, I agree with what you say. Lots of times companies will only focus on one of those aspects and not the others. And we've all dealt with people at companies that you can tell are not happy and they make your experience so bad and you decide to never go back because that one person that isn't being listened to at their office or being taken care of or being guided down a better path on how to serve people. Um, yeah, it makes a big change. You know, I, I typically ask what I call the challenge question about a big challenge people face, but I, I'm going to mix this up a little bit with you based on what you just said. What do you think with the way the world is so rapidly changing so fast, especially when you think of technology and people having to figure out this technology. What do you think is one of the biggest challenges today of running a company and dealing with that aspect of it? Good question, Mark. So getting back to my core values, right? I think that we all want to have a certain purpose in what we're doing. I work with a lot of different generations, and I think it's important to to understand what the needs are of the various generations and adapt to that, right? And and if I have that, then I can give purpose to what they're doing, right? So so we in Free to Move is we're not just running a company that offers services, but we're having a positive impact on the environment by reducing the CO2, right? That could be like a, a great purpose for someone um, working for our company, right? If you take uh, something, you know, a more traditional product like like car rental. 
So what's the purpose of that? I mean, you go on vacation, you ensuring that someone has like a nice experience. That's the one or twice a year thing where they take the family and they want to have a great time. And you ensuring that this runs smooth. I mean, that's that's an important purpose if, if you see it that way. So I think it's like to overcome those challenges, is, I think it's important people understand the why behind it. And that oftentimes helps to also stay flexible and adapt to the changes that um, we see in the automotive world. Great answer. I knew you'd come up with something awesome there. And I love the concept of why. That's always been a big thing that my regular listeners know. I love the Simon Sinek concept of why, learning what your why is. Why are you doing something? Why are we doing something uh, as a business? So well done. Let's talk about a special vehicle in your life. I like to ask people if there's one vehicle they've had in the past that really stands out and share that with us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I would have to say it's one of my current vehicles that I own. It's a uh, it's the 2019 Mercedes Sprinter. Oh, wow. It was actually our second van, and I bought that car as a two-wheel drive and uh, sent it to Germany to get converted to a permanent 4x4 vehicle with locking differentials wow. in the center and the rear and the low-gear transmission, which is actually from the Toyota Land Cruiser. So, oh, so okay. even though this is fully backed up by Mercedes, it's funny because the company that does it like you don't lose like your uh, warranty on the car. I, they're, they're one of two companies that do this worldwide. But the transmission that they use for the low gear is actually um, from, from the Land Cruiser. So it's it's, it's pretty funny. But very capable uh, van. I mean, they they do, uh, I think it's it's about like a six inch lift on the vehicle as well. So you can fit like 35s um, on that car. And yeah, we've traveled a lot around like North America and Central America with that car. So um, I have a lot of fond memories to those trips. It's, it's never let me down. I mean, we've gone through mud, like uh, we've gone off-roading with it, um, with the whole family. And it's been a lot of fun and a lot of good memories. Definitely a very special car. Wow. I think you're the first guy to say a sprinter on this show. So <laughs> you threw me off a little yeah. bit. Very cool. I love it. Yeah. Well, I like to play car psychologist and crawl into your head a little bit here. If you were reincarnated or manifest as a vehicle, not what you want to be, though. This is uh, how you perceive yourself as a mechanical thing. What would you be and why? Uh, this is a tricky one because, yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously one, one changes a little bit through life. But I, I would have to say I probably would be like a rally car, you know, maybe like a, like a, a Defender Bowler, something like that. Okay. Um, you know, I've always loved the, like the rally the car. And, and in general, I think a rally car is a car that, you know, still goes like pretty fast, but you're you're able to go – off-road as well, or if the road gets a little bit bumpy, you know, like like you prepared for that and, and you're able to explore new adventures and go on the roads less traveled. And ultimately, that's a little bit how I am as a person as well, like always trying to find new ways of doing things and exploring new areas. So yeah, if I would be reincarnated as a car, it'd definitely be like a rally car. Well, and if you think of some of the great legendary rally cars, Lancia, which is uh, part of the Stellantis group of vehicles, right? Lancia? Yeah, correct. It is. And it's, uh, there's a lot of great things in the pipeline for Lancia uh, coming up in the next few years. It's not too much I can disclose or not too much information that's that's available today. But yeah, there's, there's a, a big relaunch for, for, for the upcoming years. So very excited for that. And it's, it's going to be year more to, towards the EV sector as well. Um, but yeah, correct. And that, it used to be a great rally car. <laughs> well, for sure. And of course, we've seen what Porsche has just come out with their 911 Dakar uh, version, uh, basically a rally car with its beckons back to the 959 and uh, Dakar races and so forth, With which when they came out with that, I went, what? But you can't even get your hands on one. And I've seen a few sell on Bring a Trailer that are brand new cars that somebody or people are flipping that are selling for Close to half a million dollars. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, they've, they've done, I've seen like a few years back, like we were at the, like kind, like kind of like an Overland show. And uh -huh. the, there was one guy that had done a conversion to his 911 and had lifted it and then uh, changed the front. And um, it was just like an amazing car, you know, to see. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised that Porsches go in that direction. It's definitely it's a niche market, um, but it's definitely one that people want to explore and tap into it. And yeah, it's a it's a great car. 
I've had several guests on the show here that that's their business. They take Porsche 911s and turn them into rally cars, uh, more classic models as well. And I've got a friend who's actually got one that's about to be delivered pretty soon that ordered one of these. So he loves to go out in the mountains and so forth. So yeah, there's a niche for everything. How about great reading? Is there a book you could share with us? Yeah, sure. Um, So there's this book, um, it's called Turn the Ship Around uh, by David Market. And David Market used to be a captain on a U.S. Navy nuclear submarine. And um, when he became captain, um, his ship was one of the worst performing ships um, in the Navy. And he was able, within a relatively quick time, to literally turn the ship around and become one of the best performing ships even a long time after he left that ship and uh, went on to do other things. Um, And the way that he does it is like he shifts responsibility down to the lowest level. So everyone that's on that ship has kind of like a purpose. And I think it's a great book that you can apply to business. You can apply it, you know, to your relationships with like friends or with family. And it, it has helped me a lot to, get a different perspective on things. And it's, it's a very interesting read as well. So I, I highly recommend the book. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. I don't believe anybody's recommended that books and given that book and given how many people have recommended books here, uh, that's saying something. It's really interesting because yesterday I had a guest who recommended a book, talk about boats and things, uh, Burn the Boats, uh, which is the subtitle is Toss Plan B Overboard and un- Unleash Your Full Potential. So uh, two different uh, types of ideas here. And I'll tell you, I was very, very honored and fortunate to spend a day on a nuclear submarine a while back, back when they let civilians go on nuclear submarines. I don't think they allow that anymore. And I was blown away by the people on that vessel. It was a boomer. It was a nuclear submarine. And uh, the USS Georgia, the people on board, the young people on board, I think the average age was like 23 on that thing. Incredible. Just incredible. And they're so huge inside. It's like, what on earth? This this thing is crazy. So turn the ship around. I'll make sure I put a link to that on Clemens' show notes page so that you can find it. So let's go on the ultimate drive, Clemens. I'm a bit of an enabler. I'm going to park any car in the world in your driveway. You can take it on on a drive, but you can also take somebody with you, even somebody that's no longer with us, which opens up a world of unique opportunities. So what does this ultimate drive look like for you? Oh, well, oh, I have to think <laughs> about it, but I think, I mean, there's um, there's a little car manufacturer in uh, Scandinavia. They built mega cars. Um, and so it would probably be like a Koenigsegg uh, Gemera. I don't know if you heard about that. Oh, yes. I know what you're going to say. Man, you're you're not a cheap date, my friend. Uh. (laughs) I'm not. Yeah, I've always been a fan of of Koenigsegg and and not only because the cars that they've built, but it's like the classical story about like David against Goliath, right? And um, I think I would actually take Christian von Koenigsegg on that um, trip and uh, we'd be talking about, you know, how he built this company. I mean, how can like such a small um, company in the beginning, you know, compete against like the the big mega car manufacturers like Ferrari or Lamborghini and, and, and be highly successful. And I mean, they've been in business since I believe 1994 and uh, they built great cars. And yeah, I, I would like to get to know more of like how he did that. I'm always fascinated by People that start a business from the ground up and then make it a huge success. So that'd be my ride, the Koenigsegg Gemera and with Christian von Koenigsegg. Well, that sounds like a fun drive for sure. I had Mikael Lindbergh, who's their uh, lead designer on the show a while back. I always want to have Christian on, but his, he's always said his English skills aren't that great. So yeah, you can speak German with him since you're a multilingual, but uh, that would be pretty cool. Man. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, they're available in the U.S. now as well. I'm, I'm not sure oh, I'll yeah. be for on one day, but uh, who knows? Maybe that dream becomes true one day and I'll be able to to drive one. Well, um, why don't you just add this to the free to move fleet? Call me first, though, before you announce it so I can go and drive this thing. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I've been in a Huera, which is pretty cool. And yeah, they're just works of art. Those things are just big jewels. They're, they're pretty amazing. Well, you've taken us on a wonderful drive today, my friend. This has been great. And teaching and learning more about free to move for the Cars Yeah listeners, I have no doubt will be very valuable. Uh, I think this is great. Again, free to, the number two, move 
Move.com. You can go and find them there, download the app, play around with it a little bit. And if you're in a city where uh, there's vehicles available, give it a shot. Have some fun in some car you've never driven. Could you leave us with some parting words of wisdom or inspiration? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, first of all, Mark, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure talking to you. Um, I enjoyed this a lot. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, like life is about learning and uh, being humble, in my opinion. So, I mean, one thing that I always tell myself is do the best you can until you know better. And then when you know better, do better. So um, with that, thanks again for having me and uh, enjoy your day. Absolutely. This has been great. And again, free to move. Check it out. I'll put links on Clement's show notes page. And again, a shout out to your colleague, Dallas, for putting us together today. She was great. I enjoyed my talk with her. Um, she's the one that got you on board here today. So uh, bravo to you, Dallas. Clements, thanks for spending some time with me today, being so generous with your time. This has been wonderful. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you. You're welcome. Today's vehicles are essentially computers on wheels, and it takes more than a wrench and oil to keep them humming. That's why Cars Yeah! supports TechForce Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to driving tomorrow's workforce of skilled technicians forward. Techs keep our cars, trucks, airplanes, and fleets rolling. Yet there's a massive tech shortage because many young people don't know it's no longer a blue-collar job. Today, it's a new-collar career. It involves computers, technology, it's in high demand, you get paid really well, and you can live and work anywhere in the country. I know you're passionate about cars, trucks, and motorcycles, and you can help pass that passion on to the next generation of techs so our rides keep rolling down the road. Visit techforce.org today and learn how. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah. Yeah.